topic today is about people pleasing and uh, that is certainly a, a topic I find uh, I see quite a lot uh, when I work with clients. Uh, they are often struggling with the fact that they are in this habit of continuously pleasing and giving and over doing for others and uh, don't really know how to get out of it. So that is something where I am just really thrilled to talk about because I do feel people pleasing is something that is often overlooked and it's often overlooked because you know we as people pleasers just fall into the habit and somehow get quite comfortably in it and haven't really thought about what's the downside of people pleasing how is people pleasing actually a problem now i have to say two of my very favorite people in the world were people pleaser one was my mother who was a big people pleaser and she was uh, to the extent that she was really always over giving and uh, not only over giving to uh, her patients because she was also a physician but she was also over giving to the family and uh, you know when we wanted to help her she never allowed us to help her so that's the one person that is dear to my heart who is a people pleaser and i wish she would have changed and become more self-focused well the other person uh, surprise to surprise <laughs> is myself <laughs> I actually have been a people pleaser pretty much uh, all my life. I was um, raised as a people pleaser. Uh, just with my name, Friedemann, that was like a given that, because it means man of peace in German, uh, it was a given that I gonna please my parents, gonna make sure that they're gonna always be okay, that uh, they are not getting a divorce, that everyone in the family gets along. So people pleasing, has all different kinds of uh, variations, but I'm very familiar with them because I pretty much have done them all. So today I want to talk about, you know, what can we do to overcome the people pleasing patterns? And uh, by the way, uh, people pleasing patterns overcoming is not as easy as, uh, you know, just one uh, Instagram live talk. So that's why I divide it in two. So today is part one, next week is part two, and I hope you're going to come back next week for part two. So why do you want to overcome people pleasing? I mean, obviously you're checking not just to see my pretty face, but you are here because maybe there is something about people pleasing that bothers you. You don't really like it. You have noticed, well, you know, I am somehow since, you know, early on, someone who is just always in that mode. Now, first of all, I want to give you a break because we are not necessarily choosing to be people pleasers. I mean, as I just said, I was one from birth because my name was given to me. And also my sister was certainly not a people pleaser because she was very strong willed. And so the role fell to me. And maybe when you are looking into your own people pleaser patterns, do you think that you also have sometimes this, you know, feeling like, well, I was made a people pleaser because my mom was always depressed or my dad was always stressed. And so I didn't want to make any waves or the only way I got a little bit of attention, a little bit of love was when I was the good girl or the good little boy and uh, didn't make any problems and always helped in the kitchen and asked if there's anything else I can do. And, and when they were sad, I was there and making some jokes. And maybe you were one of, you know, several kids and then you realized, well, in some ways, you know, as the one that just did always feel like you need a little bit more attention, that's how you figured out to get it to be perfect and that role you have continued to play or you thought you had to continue to play until now and now you're asking yourself well is that really who I want to be and if you are a people pleaser and if you are here because you want to learn how to not be a people pleaser then you know already that 
people pleasing can cause us to be anxious. And that's what's really bad. This, it's an anxiety pattern. We are anxious about not pleasing. We are anxious about what people may be thinking of us. We are anxious about if we said something wrong or did something wrong. And then, of course, we are very anxious about saying no. I mean, if you are a people pleaser, whether you're a people pleaser in you know the help or caretaker way or a people pleaser in just for one person, the one that you chose, the kind of more codependent people pleasing, you have a hard time to say no because no is almost like, oh my God, this is going to create conflict and I don't want to deal with this. You feel guilty when you take care of yourself or when you make yourself a little bit more important because just like me today, have a little cold and you cannot really show up for others. And so, you know, that's another emotion that comes up. And also in the end, and that's the thing that I noticed the most, that I felt so identified with being a people pleaser and taking care of others that when people were asking me questions about myself, so for example, how is your life going? What you know, are your plans? Oh my God, I had no idea. No idea. I didn't even know what to say. I mean, I knew that I had stuff going on in my life, but I didn't know how to share this because I was so good in asking questions and listening to others and making sure that they feel seen and heard. And maybe you have noticed this too. You know, there, besides all these emotions I just said, anxiety and guilt and insecurity, there are two major downsides of being a people pleaser. And the first one is that we don't really please ourselves. We kind of disconnect from ourselves because all we want is what? All we want is just getting a little bit of approval back, getting a little bit of attention back, and other people ultimately notice us as worthy. So our whole sense of self, our whole value system is based on what we can do for others and how people then give a little bit back to us. And the second problem is that it doesn't work. You know, I found, and maybe you found that too, that at some point people take you for granted. You know, you give and give, you always show up. And, but does anyone actually say like, wow, you're so special, you're so wonderful? No, because that's what they're used to. They are used to you being in that role. And now what happened next is that you do feel resentful and even bitter because you feel like no matter what you do, it's somehow never enough. You never really get what you want. You never really get that feeling of gratitude from others. And that's not their fault. It's just our fault as people pleasers that we want something from others that they often don't even know they should give or maybe they don't have to give it. But this dependency on others and if you are not really feeling this, uh, you know, giving back from others and then feeling empty and feeling panicky and wondering like, well, where is my self-worth? I haven't really gotten a pat on the back from the person that I just, you know, was so beautifully helping on the move this weekend. And I just got a cold beer and a lousy pizza and that's it. And I feel so empty. And what did I do wrong? Was I not interesting? You know, all those doubts and all these signs of that you really are not your own authority, that you really don't feel like you are connected to yourself. That's what made me want to stop being a people pleaser. Because if you are by yourself and in the end you're feeling like, well, I don't even know A, who I am and B, I don't know what I want and if I even like that person because I've been so focusing on everybody else, well, you're kind of it, right? In the end, what I realized is when my mother died, which is already 13 years ago, I realized that, well, her being a people pleaser made her pretty much miss out on so much in her life. There were so many things that she didn't allow herself to do or to have because she didn't want to create conflict with my dad. She wanted to make sure that all the kids are, you know, taken care of, that all the patients are taken care of, all the animals are taken care of. And in the end, she died with 76 from cancer. 
and didn't really have a fulfilling life. And I don't think that people pleasers really have fulfilling lives unless they are Mother Teresa and not everyone is Mother Teresa and who knows if she was a people pleaser or if she's on a whole different scale than us. But I know for me it didn't work. And so that's why I want to talk about what can we do? How can we get out of being a people pleaser and instead really taking better care of ourselves? Now that doesn't mean that you become an uncaring person who is just, you know, selfish and doesn't really want to support anyone anymore. It just means that you're creating more balance and that you put yourself also into the forefront of your mind. So there are four ways to overcome the people pleaser mode. Number one is we have to deal with these common excuses. You know, the things we are telling ourselves all the time when we are people pleaser. I know those excuses. I wrote them. I wrote the book about it. By the way, it's in this book, The Empowerment Solution. You're going to find all about how to overcome people pleasing there. And the second one is we have to find our self-worth through ourselves. And that's really tough. If you don't really know yourself, how can you value yourself? So getting out of people pleaser mode also means you have to really fill your self-worth account and learn habits on how to do that. And the next time I'm going to talk about how to create boundaries because you cannot really get out of people pleaser mode without boundaries. And then also what you can do to please yourself. What a concept. Pleasing myself. Oh my God. Didn't even know what that meant. So let's talk about these common excuses. So one of the common excuses that you may have heard also from your parent who may also have been a people pleaser is giving is better than receiving. And I can only say, what? Is that really true? Because if that would be true, we would only really in nature exhale or let go and and never really take in. I mean, just nature shows us this has to be a balance between receiving and giving, between, you know, also uh, giving to ourselves and, and also giving out. Because in the end, you know, if they're only givers, well, who is the receiver? We have to find the balance. And so there is no better giving or receiving. The best is always that balance that we can find. And then the other one is, oh, I just like to take care of others. It makes me so happy. But does it really make us so happy? Is that really what we want? I mean, I had a client of mine who thought that, you know, she makes her so happy to cook all these lavish meals for her friends. And, and they just wanted to come over for Friday night and a little chat. And she did lobster and steak and almost got broke because of it. And no one really appreciated it because it wasn't even in their mind to have such a meal. And so she was very disappointed. She was also pretty much broke. And in the end, she felt like, why, why do I do this? Why do I give to others? Did it really make me happy? No, it only would have made me happy if I would have really gotten something in return. So this whole idea of feeling happy when you give, in the end, you have to admit just like I did, giving so much that in the end we are actually empty. We are empty with energy, we are empty with time, we are empty with our resources so that we have nothing else to give. Is that really the definition of happiness? Probably not. So it doesn't really make you happy when it's out of balance. And is, that's the third thing that people say, Self-care is selfish. Have you ever heard that? Well, I have heard it many times. And the point is just simple. Two things to remember. When you are burning out because you're just too tired, you have given too much, there is nothing left inside of you. Well, I would say that is pretty selfish because you're no use to anyone. You're pretty much just someone who is like a lemon squeezed and you squeezed yourself and then what? So that is not really anything that you would say is a, you know, a worthwhile existence. And the second thing is when you're telling yourself self-care is selfish, 
Well, think about if it's not more selfish, and I have to admit I did this plenty of times, if we are giving to others, even though they don't really want to. You know, it's like helping the older woman across the street, even though she doesn't want to, just because we think we do a good deed, or just like this client who cooked this wonderful meal and no one really wanted it or expected it. If we do really these things, we ultimately do it because we want something back in return. And we want that approval. And we want that sense of belonging or being important. Isn't that also selfish? And the third thing is, what about when you are hiding behind the self-care? You know, how many people are actually self-care, you know, uh, or always in this in this uh, giving mode, in this overgiving mode, and uh, in the uh, caretaker pleaser mode, and and that's who they are. That's how they show up. And deep inside, they are completely different. There is nothing inside of them that really shows on the surface. I mean, I was a person, as I just said, who has just always been great in asking questions and wonderful in listening to people's stories and problems and in counseling them, but I didn't really show who I was. I wasn't really honest. So my own vulnerability was hidden. And isn't that also something where you have to say that is something that uh, is selfish in the end? Because you're not sharing your truth. You're not really connecting on a more intimate level. You keep people at arm's length because that's a mask, that's the armor that you're comfortable with. So saying that self-care is selfish, well, if self-care is opening up and sharing more who you are, is filling up your battery so that you're not really burning out, is actually asking, can I do this for you, rather than assuming that they want it. And finally, also not limiting other people when we are pleasing. You know, I I certainly limited my wife plenty of times because I always thought like, well, I gotta do everything in the house. I gotta take care of all the animals. I do the whole garden, then she doesn't have to do anything. Well, the problem was that she felt kind of disconnected from the home. It almost felt like it was mine and she was only a visitor. It's like, you know, having a bed and breakfast and she stays there for the rest of her life. That was not very empowering for her. And I see this often with parents that are saying like, you know, they, they want to really make sure that their kids have everything and that they're wonderfully taken care of. But then they're also enabling them to never really grow up because they are pleasing so much and they are giving so much that the child always remember, uh, remains kind of in a disempowered place. So all this giving can also become eventually something very selfish. Just the point. So make sure that you're reminding yourself when you do want to take care of others. Do I do this for the right reasons? Do I really do this because I want to, because they need to, you know, have my support, because this is something that I'm not expecting anything in return, but because it's really coming from the goodness of my heart? Or is there some kind of an agenda underneath? And that's always really important to remind yourself of, because you don't want to end up feeling bitter. And I think that's actually what my mother died from. She developed this cancer, this cancer in the gallbladder and in the liver. And in Chinese medicine, this is often connected, this area of the body, to anger and bitterness. And, and I think my mother, as a giver and a pleaser and someone who avoided, you know, to make other people uncomfortable or get in conflict, I think she swallowed a lot of this bitterness and disappointment. And, and I think that created cancer. And that is certainly something that I find is uh, sad. And uh, I hope you will learn a little bit something about how to stop being in this people pleaser mode and take it serious. This is definitely an out of balance mode. Now, the second thing I talked about, and I just will make it brief, is how can you get what you really want from others? You know, what you want from others is, again, approval, appreciation, feeling loved, feeling needed, feeling wanted. How can you get this in other ways? Well, the best way to get it is through yourself. 
I mean, just fill your self-worth account. I often tell people, you know, look at your self-worth and think about self-worth being an account like a bank account. How often are you emptying the account with negative self-talk, with calling yourself names, with simply, you know, again, uh, criticizing yourself for not being perfect or not having done what other people wanted you to do. How often are you paying out of the self-worth account? Just waking up in the morning, looking in the mirror and already getting with a barrage of you're ugly, you're fat, you're old, blah, blah, blah. And how much are you paying back into the self-worth account? How often do you say, hey, good job. So proud of myself. I did really well. How often do you write down the things that you appreciate uh, about yourself or just stop and look at yourself and say, you know, I do like myself. I'm actually a good person. I was glad I said, you know, I'm sorry. I was glad I saw a little bug on the road who was, you know, scrambling on the back and I helped it back up. I was glad that when someone flipped me off in traffic, I didn't go into road rage. I just said sorry or I just sent them some blessings because they must have had a bad day. I like myself. How often does that happen? Probably never. So get, if you want to get out of the people pleaser mode, start filling your self-worth account simply by going and getting a better connection with yourself. So I suggest always writing down three things you appreciate about yourself every night into a special journal or into some kind of a note on your phone and just thinking about not the, the usual stuff, you know, the things that you know, oh, I'm a good mom, I'm a really good worker. No, just specific things on that day, things that actually made you feel good in that moment. Because when you are writing it down, you're focusing on it. The next time it happens, it's almost like you have created a new neural network. In that moment, you will even stronger feel that, hmm, that felt good. I did actually appreciate myself. And it sinks in deeper. It becomes a habit. And the second thing is implant in your mind your inner cheerleader. And the inner cheerleader is just like a part of you, you know, just like we have the inner critic and we always, you know, feel like either we have to listen or we have to shoot that critic, but somehow we can really do both because it doesn't really want to harm us. It just tries to somehow, you know, keep us on our toes. But now get your inner cheerleader and the inner cheerleader is that constant positive voice that says something nice about you. And you don't have to totally believe it. It doesn't mean that you immediately, when you look in the mirror, say, hmm, I'm looking nice today, that you say, yeah, 100%, that's what I believe. It may be only 40% sounding true, but it doesn't matter. Again, the more often you have this positive voice, the more often it sinks in, the more often it fills your account, your whole energy and vibration shifts, and it becomes more your new normal to feel good about yourself. And guess what? When you do feel good about yourself, you have your tank filled, you have your cup full, and then you can give. Then you have something to offer. Then you can lift somebody up and you don't expect to get anything in return. Then you can help someone on the weekend if it's really fitting in and if you have the energy for it because it's not something that really is draining you and making you frustrated afterwards. So the two things to remember for today, part one of how to stop being a people pleaser, remind yourself of those common ideas like giving is better than receiving and self-care is selfish and realize, no, this is all just stuff that we have heard from our parents, just like life is hard and money doesn't, uh, grow on trees, all those, you know, nice little sayings that are well meant, but in the end are really limiting. So remind yourself it's about balance. It's about you taking care of yourself and ultimately you becoming the one that you're responsible to. And then that you also become your source of feeling worthy, the source of feeling enough and the source of feeling safe. And for that, you want to do every day, just like you may brush your teeth, 
or maybe you do even meditate, just every day spend a little bit time to really see your goodness. See that what you appreciate and that what makes you unique. And that what you also can say, well, if people don't really like it, I do like it. And then it's actually also less scary to get criticized or maybe rejected for you saying no, which is the boundary setting that we're going to talk about next time. Because there are four ways to have boundaries that are unbreakable, unshakable. And we'll talk about it next time, how to do those. If you have any questions, I would love to hear any. As you know, I'm a people pleaser. I like to hear questions. I like to give you any kind of counsel or support. Let me know. And uh, let me just have a look here. If anything's said, you know, I have to multitask. So if you have any questions, write them in the comment section. And uh, it would be nice to, nice to hear them. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel. And uh, if you want to check out my YouTube channel, all you need to do is just simply go to your you know, search machine, Google or whatever, and type in Dr. Friedemann with an E and YouTube. And then you see my channel. There are, I don't know, 500 videos on there and uh, lots of good things to, to listen to, guided meditations. Uh, webinars, podcasts, my Empowerment Solution podcast, wonderful guests. You can definitely spend a lot of time there. So Dr. Friedman on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I hope this helped you a little bit with people pleasing. So next time you fall in the automatic pattern, stop yourself, remind yourself, is that really just pleasing them or is it also pleasing me? Does it really help me right now to give more than I may actually have? Or is that something that I just gonna do differently now? I just gonna say thank you later, but right now I do what feels good to me. And that's a win. If you are starting to see yourself as the one that you want to please, you have made a quantum leap towards a more empowered and ultimately more rewarding relationship with yourself. Hi, Dr. Friedman here. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. If you're interested in learning more about fear and anxiety, here you'll find guided meditations, webinars, and interviews with some of the most renowned experts in the field of empowerment. Delve into the over 230 videos and more to come every week.